Dar al Arkan to use the Trump brand, and oil prices hover near two month lows. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramia Faraj. Saudi real estate developer Dar al Arkan has inked a deal to use the Trump brand for its $4 billion project in Saudi and Oman. The financial terms haven't been disclosed. The Trump Organization manages hotels, golf courses, and other real estate around the world. The AIDA project, a joint venture with Oman Tourism Development Company, will include Trump residential villas, a hotel, and a golf course built near Muscat and would take over a decade to complete. Staying with Trump, he says he has no interest in returning to Twitter after he was banned for inciting violence. Elon Musk has reinstated his account after 15 million Twitter users voted 51.8% in favor of his reinstatement. Trump says he'll stick with his new platform Truth Social, the app developed by his Trump media and technology group startup. Oil prices hovered near two-month lows this morning as supply fears receded, while concerns over China's fuel demand and rising interest rates weighed on prices. Brent crude futures for January traded in the $87 range, and West Texas futures for December were at $80 a barrel. Both benchmarks closed Friday at their lowest since September 27th, extending losses for a second week. Tight crude supplies in Europe have eased as refiners have stockpiled ahead of the December 5th EU embargo on Russian crude. European traders are rushing to fill tanks with Russian diesel before the EU ban begins in February, as alternative sources remain limited. The EU will ban Russian diesel by February 5th that will follow the ban on Russian crude taking effect on December 5th. Russian diesel loadings destined for the Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Antwerp storage region rose to 215,000 barrels per day from November 1st to 12th. That's a 126% rise from October. China's oil supplies from Russia rose 16% year-on-year in October, coming second after top supplier Saudi Arabia. Imports from Russia reached 1.82 million barrels per day. Higher imports come as state-run traders boosted purchases of Russian urals loaded mostly from European ports. This is before the traders cut imports in recent weeks in the face of imminent European Union sanctions. Saudi shipments, meanwhile, increased 12% from a year earlier to 1.87 million barrels per day versus 1.83 million barrels per day in September. FTX says it owes its 50 top creditors around $3.1 billion. FTX owes about $1.4 or five billion to its top 10 creditors. Debtors are usually asked in such cases to provide a list of the names and addresses of the top 20 unsecured creditors. But given the scale of its debt, FTX will file a list of the 50 largest creditors. When it filed for bankruptcy protection, FTX said it had over 100,000 creditors with claims in the case. Disney ousted its chief executive, Bob Chapek, over the weekend and brought back former CEO Bob Iger to once again take the reins. The change is a dramatic turn of events from the world's largest media company. It was effective immediately. Chapek spent two years as CEO, during which Disney's stock fell 41 percent. Iger, meanwhile, was CEO for 15 years, increasing the company's market cap fivefold during that period. Countries reached a hard-fought final agreement at COP27 on the creation of a loss and damage fund to help support vulnerable countries hit hard by climate disasters. Governments took the decision to establish new funding arrangements to assist countries respond to loss and damage. The loss and damage funding covers a slew of climate impacts from bridges and homes washed away in flash floods to the threatened disappearance of cultures and whole islands to the creeping rise of sea levels. And after 12 years of preparations for the 2022 FIFA World Cup, the tournament finally kicked off last night with a spectacular opening ceremony at Al Bayt Stadium in Al Khor, Qatar. The ceremony was held at the 60,000 capacity venue. The ceremony started with a presentation narrated by actor Morgan Freeman and Qatari YouTuber Ghanem Al Mufta who read out a verse from the Qur'an about diversity. The theme was about the gathering of all mankind, bridging differences through humanity, respect and inclusion. I'm Ramya Faraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.